Jason. Let's uh, speak now to uh, Air Force Colonel John Dorian, spokesman for, the, for Operation Inherent Resolve, the U.S.-led coalition against ISIL. He's with us live from Baghdad. Yeah. Well, we're, we're advising and assisting the Iraqi and Peshmerga forces as they position themselves and move toward uh, Mosul. So this is something that we've done in many of the liberation battles before. It's, uh, it's something that helps very much. Uh, as, the, uh, as the Iraqis move into position and prepare to take on what, by all accounts, is going to be a very large task here. When you say that you're assisting, I mean, with what? With logistics? With, with planning? Uh, with, with just advising? Well, what kind of advice does the coalition give Iraqi and Peshmerga forces? Yeah. Well, we do provide uh, in our intelligence capability. We provide our logistics. These are capabilities that the coalition has that are singularly distinctive. We're very capable in these areas, and it's a big help to the Iraqis as they move into position. Since Mosul is the second largest city in Iraq, uh, there's a large number of forces that are going to have to go in there. It's going to take a tremendous amount of logistical support to help them move along. Uh, since Daesh have been in Mosul, uh, for something like two years, they've had a chance to dig some very elaborate defenses, and we provide them a lot of advice, a lot of intelligence. And then, of course, from the air and with our artillery, we we'll provide strikes to uh, soften up those targets so that the Iraqis can move in uh, and be successful as they assault the city. Uh, I, I was just about to ask you, what, what about the coalition air power? Will it be brought to bear? Um, as as you, you've just said, that, that you've already been, been using it to, quote, soften up uh, um, uh, targets with, within Mosul, but will it be used once, once those uh, Peshmerga and Iraqi forces, I, I think it's just going to be Iraqi forces at first, make it on the ground into Mosul? Yeah, the plan is for the Iraqis to be the ones to liberate Mosul. They're going to be the ones that move into the city. It's a very uh, tough task to do that. Urban warfare is very challenging. The coalition has trained a large number of Iraqi security forces, something like 54,000 in the last two years. That's the Iraqi army, that's police, and that's tribal forces that will all be converging on the city and uh, preparing to uh, take on that tough battle. And then provide for the security that will be required afterwards so the situation can be stabilized. And what about the people of Mosul as, as part of your, your role, your planning, uh, this backup role that, that the coalition is playing at the moment? Um, have you uh, made any plans as to what happens once Mosul has liberated in terms of the humanitarian aspect. I mean, people who've been living in Mosul under the bombardment, uh, who, who live through the, the battle to liberate Mosul, what, what happens to those people and how do you support them? Well, we've been working very closely with the Iraqi government that has the lead for providing care and assistance to internally displaced persons, the people that would be fleeing the fighting in and around Mosul and other places around Iraq. So we've been working with them. We've been working with the UN and with non-government associations, the uh, aid organizations that are here to provide help to the, the people of Iraq. One of the things that uh, when you, you know, going back to that advise and assist role, uh, planning for this sort of thing is something that the uh, coalition has a tremendous amount of experience with, and we've been providing that experience, that advice to the Iraqis as they come up with their plan. So most recently, they've uh, directed the building of 20 uh, internally displaced person camps uh, so that uh, aid uh, material can be pre-positioned so that as needed, when people move into these camps, they'll have the things that they need in order to survive. Okay, Colonel, good to talk to you. Many thanks indeed. Air Force Colonel uh, John Dorian there speaking from Baghdad. What can you tell us about civilians in the city? Are they being used as human shields? Well, it's very possible that Dash will try to use uh, civilians as human shields. They've used that tactic in some other liberation battles, and it's something that we have prepared the Iraqi security forces here. 
It's something that we evaluate as we conduct our precision air strikes. Uh, it's, a, it's a very difficult threat, and it shows the disregard that our enemies have uh, for civilian life. We try to be very careful to protect civilians, uh, and they try to put them in harm's way in order to uh, try to delay the Iraqi advance. Yeah, and Colonel, what's the timeline for this mission? Well, operations are ongoing now. I think it would be madness to try to predict how long they'll take. It, a lot of that depends on how long the, the uh, DASH fighters try to hold out, whether they fight and die in place or whether they try to run. So uh, very difficult to predict the timing. Uh, the Iraqis are moving every day. They, they achieve their objectives earlier in the day than they're expected to, and then we'll continue to advance tomorrow. Uh, right now what we see is that uh, the Iraqis uh, are encountering light to moderate resistance. Dash are unable to slow them down, uh, but we do expect that to get tougher as they get closer to the inner city. No, we haven't seen anything that we would consider surprising. Uh, we continue to provide our strikes in support of the Iraqi advance, uh, and we've seen some number of internally displaced persons start to move north uh, away from Mosul into territory that's controlled by the Peshmerga. And we understand some of these internally displaced have been providing information about ISIS inside Mosul. Is that correct? We, we have seen instances where internally displaced persons were able to provide useful information to the Iraqi security forces. We think that this is a condition that uh, Prime Minister Abadi set forth whenever he was uh, doing his radio address a few days ago. He asked the people of Mosul to cooperate with the Iraqis as they move forward, and so far that's what we've seen. And let me ask you a little bit about the Peshmerga. You referenced them. I understand they've advanced pretty much as far as they want to go at this stage. Uh, will they go any farther in terms of territory? Will they enter Mosul at all? I know they have an agreement with the Iraqi security forces that they won't, but will they be needed? Well, the Iraqi security forces have been able to advance along multiple axes, as have the Peshmerga, who have reached their forward line. Uh, they've stopped, uh, and the Iraqi security forces continue their advance. This is an agreement that was worked out between the Iraqi government and the, uh, the Kurdish regional government. Mm -hmm. So they, they're, they've stopped, basically, the Peshmerga? They have. The Peshmerga have continued to do back clearing in the area that they've, uh, they've liberated and uh, to find those pockets of Daesh fighters and try to make sure that they haven't left any sleeper cells that could cause security problems later. But one has to wonder, though, if the Iraqi army will need backup here from the Peshmerga. Is that a possibility? Well, the Iraqi army has been on a winning streak for more than a year. They've defeated Daesh in every significant engagement uh, that they've encountered them in more, for more than a year. So this is in Ramadi and Fallujah. They were able to liberate those cities, and more recently in Kaara and Sharkat. So we expect them to be, continue to be able to impose their will on Daesh and to take away the second largest city in Iraq from their control. All right, that's uh, certainly the hope for, for many. You, you mentioned, by the way, Ramadi and Fallujah, but in the aftermath of the liberation of those cities, there were accusations and reports that some of these Shiite militia fighters who helped the Iraqi army committed some pretty terrible atrocities there. Any concerns that this might happen again with Mosul? Well, there is a political dimension to the planning for Mosul, and the Iraqis have been working on this for a month. Uh, Prime Minister Abadi, has been very clear that he won't accept human rights abuses. We've worked with him very closely to come up with a plan that understands the, the political dimension as well as the operational dimension of liberating Mosul. So uh, there is a political agreement that the Iraqi security forces and police will be the ones that go in, and they'll be the ones who are also screening internally displaced persons. I think there were some lessons learned in, in Fallujah, and we don't expect to see that again. To screen them for potential ISIS fighters trying to slip out? Well, anytime you have internally displaced persons, 
uh, you can expect Daesh to try to slip out with them. Uh, this is a, a, a task that the Iraqis have been trained to deal with and to try to keep uh, the uh, Daesh from being able to, to escape. And uh, speaking of escaping, by the way, I mean, you have a situation where in the West, the ISIS leadership could escape West, perhaps even to Raqqa in Syria. Uh, that must be a, a concern there, right, that you might have that type of the leadership figures finding a way out? Well, this is a tactic that we've seen at different uh, battles in the past. Sometimes Daesh will try to, the Daesh leadership uh, will try to escape and then they'll leave fighters to die in place on their behalf. This is something that you see. Uh, it's very demoralizing sometimes for the uh, fighters who are left behind to die. Uh, but it's not something that we uh, would be surprised by. And certainly they still do have some limited freedom of movement in very small numbers. Mm -hmm and it's possible that they'll try to escape. And if uh, Mosul, or when, I should say, Mosul falls, uh, or is taken, retaken from ISIS, is that the end of that terrorist group in Iraq? Well, Mosul is what Daesh consider their capital city in Iraq. So we expect them to fight very hard to retain it. Uh, once it's been taken away, we don't think that that's the end here. They still do control some other areas, and we're going to help the Iraqis to make sure they establish security throughout the country, not just in Mosul, but all around Iraq. The job isn't done until yeah. all of Iraq is dash free. So it's a long haul fight here. Well, you, it, it, there's no telling how long it'll take. The Iraqis have been very clear that they don't intend to let up the pressure. They've established a tremendous amount of momentum in this fight against Daesh. That's one of the reasons why they've decided to move forward on this uh, very aggressive timeline into Mosul. You, the Daesh is an adaptive and determined enemy. You don't want to give them an opportunity to regroup, uh, and that's why the Iraqis are moving.